Okay, fifth graders. Um, we are doing 7-7. Seven -seven. Chapter 7, Section 7. Um, and we're modeling, adding uh, mixed numbers. And so in this first example here, um, it says Bill has two boards he will use to make uh, picture frames. What's the total length of the boards uh, Bill has to make the picture frames? And so they have 1 and 11 twelfths and 2 and, and 1 third. And so it says step one, it says rename the fractional parts as equivalent fractions. So um, you can see it, I think, pretty well, probably much better in your book. But um, the common the denominator they came up with is 12. And so we have all these uh, small parts, these 12th parts. And so it says rename 15 over 12 as 1 and 3 twelfths. Okay, and actually one and three twelfths can also that's that can be reduced down to one and one fourth. Okay, three twelfths can be reduced. Then it says step two. It says add the whole number parts. So what do we have here? One, two, three, and this would be four. And what's left over? Three twelfths, which can be reduced to, as I said, um, one quarter. All right. So um, four and one quarter feet would be the total length. Now, you know, if the modeling helps you guys, great. You can do that. If it doesn't, then I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I'm not worried about the convince me here. You guys can actually skip that one. Let's just jump into the guided practice here. Um, let's see here. Do you understand? It says when adding two mixed numbers, uh, does it ever make sense to rename the fractional sum? explain and oh yes it does um so what well, you can add the fractions or parts okay because you can't add the fractions unless they have unless they have the same sized parts Okay, so in two through five, it says uh, use fraction strips to find each sum. Um, if you want to use fraction strips, you can. I'm I'm not too concerned about that. But let me do number let me do do number two here with you guys. Um, so uh, let's see here. I'm gonna draw a, a kind of an imaginary fraction strip, two of them, okay? And this first one will represent the one-tenth, and the second one will represent um, the four-fifths. So ideally, we want them to represent the same, um, the same size. Okay, so one tenth, I, I don't know, I'm guessing would be, you know, about this much right there. Four fifths would be, I don't know, probably most of most of this fraction strip. Uh, so the common denominator would be 10 if we wanted to actually add those two together. So one tenth, and if I was adding four fifths. Okay, so a common denominator of 10. Uh, that would stay one tenth. Five goes into ten twice. Two times uh, four is eight. So that would be eight tenths. Well, now we have the same denominator, so we can just add them. So what would it be? It would it'd be eight plus one would be nine tenths. Okay. Um, so again, if I was to do the two fraction strips, um, I would have one fraction strip that would be 8 tenths. And I'm just going to put that right here. The 4 fifths would equal 8 tenths. And the 1 tenth would equal, as it is, 1 tenth. And then if you divided up those fraction strips into 8 tenths and 1 tenth, then you could just combine them. And you would, of course, get 9 tenths. All right? So um, I'll come over here, and what was the answer? Did I actually do it? No, I don't think I did. So one, um, 
let's see here. Let me go back to this. I'm going to do one and one tenth and two and four fifths. Okay. And uh, we already figured out this would be eight tenths and this would be one tenth. So we'd add those together. That would be nine tenths. And then you just add up the whole numbers. One plus two is three. So three and nine tenths. So I'll just come over here and put three and nine tenths. So if you want to use fraction strips, you can, if it, if it helps you visually understand how these work. Let me do one more really quick. How about if I do number three? I'll do one and one half. I'm just going to add these up here. And two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. What's the common denominator? Well, it should be pretty obvious. It's going to be four. So this stays three quarters. If we're using the same denominator, nothing changes. 2 goes into 4 twice, times 1 is 2, so that's 2 fourths. So add 3 and 2, that's 5 fourths. And then add the whole numbers, that's 3, so 3 and 5 fourths. Now, let me point out something. This is important here. So we have um, an improper fraction with 5 fourths. That is the numerator. 5 fourths. The numerator is larger than the denominator. Numerator and denominator. So how would you fix that? Well, how many times does 4 go into 5? 4 goes into 5 one time. And what's left over? 1. So that would become 1 and 1 quarter. That 1 is then added to the 1 plus 2, which is 3. So um, 3 plus 1, and then 1 quarter left over. So the answer uh, would be for, which number was that that I was doing? Number 3. It would be um, 4, 4 and 1 quarter. All right. So um, let me give you a couple other, <coughs> excuse me, examples of adding improper fractions. Um, so how about um, how about 11 tenths? How many times does 10 go into 11? Goes in one time. You can kind of look at it like you're subtracting. What's left over? One, and then the denominator stays the time. 11 tenths is the same as one and one tenth. I don't know, how about, um, how about um, seven over two? What would that be? Well, how many times does 2 go into 7? If it's 3 times, what's left over? 1, and the denominator stays the same. So 2 goes into 7 3 times, which would be 6. And then there's 1 left over. That would become the numerator, and um, 2, the, the denominator stays the same. How about, um, oh, I don't know, how about uh, 20 over 5? What would that equal? Well, how many times does 5 go into 20? It goes in 4 times. Is there anything left over? No. So 20 over 5 is equivalent to 4. Let me do one more. How about um, um, 9 over 2? What's that equal? How many times does 2 fit into 9? goes 4 times. What's left over? There was 1 left over because it was 8. And the denominator stays the same. All right, so 6 through 16, you guys can do those. Um, if you want to use fraction strips, you can. If you don't want to, that's okay. Notice that they're all addition, and, and it says to use fraction strips to find each sum. You don't have to. Let me just, uh, let me do number 9, for example. We have 4 and 5 sixths. And we're adding 1 and 1 12th. What's the common denominator we would use? I think 12 would make a lot of sense. So that would stay the same because we're using the same denominator. 6 goes into 12 twice. 2 times 5 is 10. Now we're going to add those up. 1 plus 10 is 11. So that's 11 twelfths. And then we add up the whole numbers. 1 plus 4 is 5. So 5 and 11 twelfths okay 
All right, let's go to um, the last page, the problem solving. Let's look at those really quick here. Um, Lindsay used uh, one and a quarter gallons of tan paint uh, for the ceiling and then four and three eighths of green paint for the walls. How much paint did she use? And I'll just add them up. Number 18, Paul said he walked two and a half miles and then two and three quarter miles. How many miles in all? Add them up. You guys can do these. Higher order thinking. Tori is making muffins. The recipe calls for two and five six cups of brown sugar and then one and a third cups of brown sugar for the topping. Uh, Tori has four cups of brown sugar. Does she have enough brown sugar? Well, so you're going to add up how much she needs versus how much she actually has, which is four cups. And then, um, let's see, 20 and 21, use the map. Each unit represents one block. So each unit is one block. Okay, so I think they mean that if you move over from like this point to this point, that would be considered one block. So Ben left the museum and he walked four blocks to his next destination. Where's the museum? There it is. Okay, he walked four blocks to his next destination. What was Ben's destination? So you need to find something that is four blocks away. I'll let you do that. 21, uh, let's see, Ben walked from the restaurant to the bus stop. From the restaurant to the bus stop. Um, and then he took the bus, the bus to the station. Oh, stadium, sorry, not station. Bus to the stadium. If you took the shortest route, how many blocks did Ben travel? So, um, well, the shortest route would be probably uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like 11. Uh, note that Ben can only travel along the grid lines. In other words, he can't travel diagonally. So I couldn't go from this point to this point by going like that. I would have to go um, either over one and then up or up and then over one. Okay. I think you guys can do that one. Uh, 22, 23 looks like they're multiple choice. And that's it for this video. And I will see you guys... Uh, soon.